coming up on today's show. Tesla's battery day introduces us to Tesla's brand new 4860 cell and showcases how Tesla plans to reduce the cost of making batteries by a sexy 69%. Trevor Milton seemingly disappears off the face of the earth after stepping down at Nikola and the Volkswagen ID4 launch causes such demand that Volkswagen's pre-order website crashes. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation. And welcome to the official start of National Drive Electric Week. This show is sponsored by the Electric Auto Association. Find out how to join them and how to accelerate the switch from fossil fuels to electric today by heading to electricauto.org. As probably one of the most hyped electric car events of the year, we really can't start anywhere else this week than the Tesla Battery Day, which took place on Tuesday. Coming hot on the heels of Tesla's annual shareholder meeting, Battery Day treated us to some of the improvements that Tesla is planning to dramatically lower the cost of making electric transportation more affordable. It includes a brand new tabless battery cell, the 4860 cell, as well as a new set of cell chemistries that are cobalt free, use silicon at the anode and varying levels of nickel at the cathode. Tesla plans to build a brand new high speed, fully automated production line and intends to switch away from its current battery pack designs to structural battery packs, made possible in part by its shift to massive casting machines for various vehicle components. We covered it this week on the channel, including the sexy 69% improvement, so check out our quick rundown later. While Lucid Motors has been downplaying any sense of rivalry between it and Tesla, this week has certainly been full of it, with Lucid publishing details of an impressively quick lap at the WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca in the 1 minute 33 second zone, only to be beaten a few days later by Tesla in the planned Model S at 1 minute 30.3 seconds. As for quarter mile times, well, Lucid was expected to get ahead of the competition by posting a video of a brand new quarter mile record set, beating its previous record of 9.9 .9 seconds and setting a time of 9.245 seconds. That's blisteringly quick and puts Lucid well ahead of the Porsche Taycan. However, Tesla is now claiming a quote sub nine second quarter mile for the Model S Plaid. It just hasn't given exact numbers yet. Expect this to go on for a while and both cars are promised to launch next year. It's official. As part of the fallout into what I'm going to call the Hindenburg Research Gravity Gate, because it included a Nikola 1 quote in motion rolling down a road powered by nothing but 9.8 meters per second squared, Trevor Milton is out at Nikola. Announced on Monday, the official statement from the troubled startup said that Milton had approached the board of directors and proposed to step aside. Many of you suggest it was more a case of him being asked to leave, but nonetheless, there is now a new chairman of the board, Stephen Gursky, former vice chairman of GM. In his leaving statement, Milton said he wanted the focus on the company and not on him, but he walked away with $3.2 billion of Nikola shares, which may or may not be worth something in the future. And he's promptly disappeared from both social media and the internet as a whole. I'm not going to lie, I think Nikola's future involves a visit from the Grimm. As Porsche's first electric car, the Taycan has gained a lot of praise for its excellent engineering, its punchy performance and its ability to twist the laws of physics. When it was first launched, some in the industry had questioned if hardened Porsche fans would actually accept an electric vehicle into the Porsche stable. But now we know for sure that the answer is a resounding yes. During August, while models like the Panamera suffered a 71% drop in sales year on year and the Macan suffered a 62% drop in sales year on year, Taycan sales topped the charts with 1183 registrations. Naturally, the Taycan hasn't been on sale for a year yet, so we can't compare its performance to last year. But other than the Taycan, the only other Porsches with a good month was the Cayenne Coupe, which was up 29%. Like so many auto industry reveals this year, the Volkswagen ID4 launch was postponed from earlier this year to this week, and it took place online. Despite being virtual, however, the highly anticipated global electric crossover delivered in terms of specifications, 
features and pricing, and has proven so popular with US buyers that the ID.4 first launch edition sold out in less than a day, and it crashed Volkswagen's websites in the process. Powered by the same 77 kilowatt hour battery pack and MEB based platform as the ID3, the ID4 isn't a sports car, but it does offer towing capabilities and practical everyday driving in a compact, stylish package. It will go on sale in early 2021, with US pricing below that of both the Model Y and the Ford Mustang Mark E. This is one to watch. Unless you're really hot on Chinese automakers, you've probably never heard of Lincoln Co before. But this week, the luxury brand, which is part of the Geely Automotive Group, revealed its zero concept. Styled as a crossover with some pretty big styling cues that remind me of a Porsche at the front and a Volvo at the rear, the zero concept is the first all-electric model to wear the Lincoln Co badge. But don't think for a minute that this is a startup with no experience in the EV world. Since Lincoln Co is part of the Geely Group, it's built on the same platform that underpins both the XE40 Recharge and the Polestar 2. It's not clear if this model will be sold outside of China, but I've got to say I quite like the styling. When I know more, I will of course share. Sticking with Chinese brands, Xpeng, and yes, that is the official Western pronunciation of the company's name, Chaopeng, has just loaded a transporter with the first G3 crossovers to head to Europe. While the G3 has been on sale in China for more than a year now, these European spec variants, now at sea, are expected to cause quite a stir in Europe as the G3 offers some of the features that Tesla offers, but for a lot more affordable pricing. How affordable? Well, somewhere in the 33 to 40,000 euro price point, depending on how you configure it. Granted, Xpeng is currently in a bit of a battle with Tesla over a dashboard and in-car design and alleged code copying that is very much Tesla Model X, but reviewers like Bjorn Nyland have been very complimentary about how the car operates. I've asked about when G3 is coming to North America, but for now there are sadly no plans. Opel, now completely free from its former owner, Jonal Motors, and well and truly enjoying life as part of the PSA group, has officially priced its upcoming Mokka E for sale in Europe. While not every market where it will be sold has received official pricing, German customers can now order the Mokka E for an effective price of €23,420, including VAT and a massive German governmental incentive designed to get people plugging in. With a 100 kilowatt electric motor and 50 kilowatt hour battery pack, the Mokka E is most definitely not the longest legged EV out there, but with a WLTP range of up to 324 kilometers per charge, it's one of the most affordable electric cars out there, especially if you happen to live in Germany. I know that this year has been pretty tough and it's set new lows for humanity, but for the next week, I hope you'll join me in at least having some hope for the future of transport as it's the 10th annual Drive Electric Week, organized by Plug in America, the Sierra Club and the Electric Auto Association. Because COVID, this year is actually just four days long and you can't really safely attend in-person events. But that's totally okay because there are more than 141 online events taking place over the next few days that can totally help you dump the pump and plug in wherever you are in the world. And to kick it off, the annual event and awards ceremony, which happened last week, took place. This week, recipients of awards included Washington Governor Jay Inslee, EV Nonprofit Diversity Group, EV Hybrid Noir, and our buddy Robert Llewellyn from Fully Charged. As a recipient of an award last year, I am so proud of each and every one of you who was honored this year, and here's to many, many more Drive Electric Weeks. And now it's time for Short Shorts. Tesla's computer systems suffered an outage this week, crippling everything from Tesla's over-the-air software updates to smartphone access, the supercharger network and more. Luckily, the outage lasted just an hour, although Tesla hasn't really said what caused it. Walmart has announced that it wants to shift to a fully electrified fleet by 2040 as part of a new commitment to become 100% zero emission. Right now, Wally World is home to many an Electrify America charging site, but it doesn't yet have its own EV fleet. Tesla has dealt what a feels like a knockout blow in its ongoing battle with Nikola over alleged patent infringement. Nikola has been trying to get $2 billion out of Tesla, but a filing this week shows that Nikola's patents shouldn't have been granted in the first place. 
Canu has published video this week showcasing progress on the skateboard platform that will underpin its vehicle subscription service. Frankly, while it is good to see a working chassis, it looks a long way from being ready for prime time. During a question and answer after Battery Day this week, Elon Musk confirmed what we'd all been suspecting, that Cybertruck will only be made and sold in North America. Noting that it wouldn't pass homologation in Europe, Musk promised a smaller, more Wolverine model for other markets. Months after it turned its official reveal event into a political rally for the Trump-Pence re-election campaign, Lordstown Motors has finally shared pictures this week of the interior of its endurance pickup truck. It's claiming an awful lot of orders, but frankly, something smells off. You already know that the Cybertruck is huge, but it looks like Tesla might be about to start building Cybertruck-specific supercharger stalls to accommodate Tesla's next vehicle. Plans are apparently being submitted at some sites for stalls big enough for both a Cybertruck and a trailer. California has officially announced a ban on all new internal combustion engine vehicles from 2035 onwards. It's part of a move to make the entire state zero emission, but it could take many years before the ban works through the used car fleet. Karma Automotive, another company that has been mired in controversy this year, is apparently changing the name of its first fully electric model. Rather than the Rivero GTE, its previous name for the same, it will now be using GSE-6. Charging network specialist ChargePoint is the latest green car tech company to announce its intention to enter into the stock market via a reverse acquisition. It will earn a total of $493 million in the process. The UK government is said to be considering bringing forward a planned ban on new internal combustion engine vehicle sales to 2030, which would jump past other European countries planning similar bans. I've heard speculation that the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, had a part to play in the push to move the ban forwards. As it prepares to put a deadline on signing up for enhanced autopilot, Tesla is reportedly preparing to launch a new subscription service intended to get people signing up to a monthly fee to use full self-driving. Details aren't public yet, but when I have them, I will share. There has never been more public charging infrastructure in the UK than then is today. But the city of Brighton got a whoops moment this week when it revealed that one of its new public lamppost-based charging stations was by a double yellow line, which in the UK means nobody can park there to charge without getting a ticket. Whoops. Tesla has announced a new $2,000 optional upgrade for Model Y owners designed to give their cars a little performance boost. How much of a boost? A half second for the 60 miles per hour sprint time, which frankly feels like something most people won't opt for. A new Powerboat Race Series got its official launch on Friday. Called the E1 Series, it features custom-made all-electric powerboats and has been founded by the same team responsible for both Formula E and Formula Extreme E. It's expected to launch in the next few years. Talking of Formula Extreme E, it announced a new partnership with UNICEF this week to empower young climate change makers in Greenland. It also announced the launch of its refurbished ship, which is going to be used to help transport teams and equipment around the world. It's official. Plug-in hybrids and electric vehicles cost less to maintain and repair. If you already own one of these vehicles, you probably already know this, but this week Consumer Reports published a paper backing that up with cold, hard data. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. On this channel, we like to cover all types of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation. And of course, one mode of transportation that's got a serious emissions problem is the airline industry. This week, Airbus became the latest company to showcase its vision for the future of air travel with a trio of zero emission concepts designed to make air travel more environmentally friendly. Interestingly, though, while some companies we've been looking at have been talking about personal VTOL and short-haul electric planes, Airbus has chosen hydrogen-powered planes instead. Two of the three planes, a turbofan and turboprop, rely on burning hydrogen in modified gas turbine engines. But a third concept plane proposes a blended wing design with tiny electric fans and presumably a hydrogen fuel cell stack inside. And finally... With the Mustang Mark E due to begin deliveries at the end of this year, Ford's been really busy working on promoting its first long-range electric car. 
And as part of that, it's just announced the fact that its Mustang Mark E GT will be going on sale in Europe, claiming that it's faster than anything else in its segment. That's upset Tesla Model Y fans, as the Mark E GT does match the Model Y dual motor performance on paper, even though the Model Y dual motor performance isn't on sale yet, and it isn't helped that at a recent press event to mark California's new 2035 ban on ICE cars, Ford's current efforts to sell EVs was played up significantly and Tesla was basically ignored. However, having seen the statements made, I can see that nothing incorrect technically was said, and what was said was carefully worded to be true if a little disingenuous. Honestly, this isn't the first time we've seen an automaker do this, and every automaker does it to some extent, including Tesla. So let's hope the Drive Electric Week means that we can send an end to this and a collaborative push towards cleaner air for everyone. We can wish, right? And on that note, we are done for the day. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's show. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe that our future depends on us all making the switch to clean green electric cars today. You can find out how to join, how to become a local EV educator, attend local monthly meetups, or just find EV owners to talk about making your own switch to electric by going to electricauto.org. I would love it if you'd like, comment and subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. And if you feel able, please consider supporting us using the links below. If you already do, you and the rest of our team send you our deepest gratitude. And if you're unable to support us at this time, just know that interacting with us on YouTube and the Twitters really helps get the word out. After a bit of a hiatus, we do now have a new t-shirt shop running with red bubble with plenty of new swag for you to enjoy. And we've been launching it with some Halloween themed EV t-shirts. So please check them out by following the link below. I'll be back next week, but in the meantime, please keep yourself and your loved ones safe, wear a mask, and make sure you're registered to vote if you live in the US. I'll see you as soon as I can. Keep evolving.